Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. Today, I want to talk to you about power supplies for your Apple II computer. So we're going to cover what's inside a typical power supply, what can go wrong with them, how to diagnose whether yours is working correctly, and what to do to try to repair it. So let's get started. First thing to do is to analyze what type of power supply you have. Apple used a lot of different brands over the lifetime of making the Apple II, and the different brands have different characteristics in terms of how easy they are to fix. You might have one of the old gold colored ones, for example, in my Apple II Plus, this is what it has, or you might have one in a more modern unit like this one, which came out of an Apple IIe. This one happens to be made by Aztec, as well as the one that was in my Apple II Plus. Another thing to consider is how easy it is to open up and possibly repair the power supply. Some of them actually had rivets on the bottom, which you need to drill out. Both of these, the one in the Apple II Plus and the one that came out of this Apple IIe, all have screws, so that makes it easy to fix. So let's open one of these up and see what we have inside. To work on a power supply, you only need a few tools. You'll need a screwdriver to be able to open up the case. You will need a voltmeter or a multimeter to diagnose whether you're getting the correct output voltages. And then if you decide that you need to replace some components, you'll need a soldering iron. Here I actually am just using a battery operated soldering iron that I got from SparkFun, which works surprisingly well. So let's open up the case. Here I've got just five screws on either side that need to be undone. And of course, you want to make sure that you obviously have this unplugged from your mains power supply before you work on this. All right, now that we have the bottom unscrewed, we should just be able to slip off the cover. And inside, here's the actual power supply. So let's take a look at what we've got in there. And it all looks pretty good. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, you probably want to disconnect it from the power supply and let it sit for maybe a day or so. Just these capacitors aren't too large, but they can still give you a zap if you touch them right after you've unplugged this from your Apple II. But looking at all these components, on the left we have power in from your mains power. So this would be either 120 volts or 220, depending on where you are. And so the left-hand side is handling all of the conversion from AC to DC, alternating current to direct current. And in the right-hand side here, this is where you're actually converting from the, say, 12 volts that it steps down to, to the various voltages that the Apple II needs. And if you look on the end of the power supply, Apple actually conveniently shows you what the output is. So we've got two ground lines as well as four power lines. There's a plus and minus 5 volt and a plus and minus 12 volt. And they also tell you what the maximum load is for these in amps. All right, so let's take a look inside at the components. We've got a few capacitors here, probably just for filtering the main line. There's a fuse down there in the lower left. And then in the middle, you've got a transformer, and this is going to convert, say, from 120 volts down to probably 12 volts. So if you're trying to diagnose a problem with your power supply, for example, let's say your Apple II just doesn't power on, the first thing I would check is the fuse. So these can blow for any number of reasons, but that would be the main thing to check. And so you can just pop that out uh, very carefully with maybe a pair of tweezers, as long as you don't squeeze it too hard and you could just order one online if that's burned out. Another important thing to check are all the capacitors. And if a capacitor has failed or is going to fail, it will be swollen around the top or might even be swollen on the sides. And in really bad cases, it actually will have already burst open. Uh, if it's burst open, then you're kind of maybe in trouble because it might have leaked all over the circuit board. But that's one important thing. So look at all these capacitors here. These all look good. 
These all look good. They're not swelling at the top. Nothing's leaking out. So this all looks pretty good. So the next thing you might want to check are all of your wires. So for example, you might actually be getting power all the way through to the Apple II and maybe there's just a, a loose connection or something. So make sure you don't see any loose wires, uh, anything else that looks strange. If necessary, you could actually pop off the circuit board. There's six screws that hold it down and take a look at the bottom of it to see if you see any black marks or anything. Uh, but this one looks good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and actually plug it in and we'll measure the voltages just to make sure those are okay. And here I need to stress that you stay safe. So when you're doing this, what I would recommend is actually putting the cover back on, then plugging in the power supply and only measure the voltages on the DC side. Uh, so th that's this side with the uh, six plug connector. You don't really want to mess with anything over on the left hand side because uh, those could pack quite a wallop. So let's put the cover back on and we'll plug it in and we'll just measure some of the voltages. All right, so let's play around with the power supply and see if we can figure out the output voltages and make sure this power supply is working well. So first thing, let's just briefly go over how to use a multimeter. So the main thing you're going to be using this for is measuring either resistances and specifically whether two wires are connected together or not and voltage. And so to measure the resistances, the easiest thing to do if your multimeter has a continuity tester, that will indicate whether two wires are connected together. And this is typically shown on the dial by something that looks like a triangle with a line and then there'll be three little lines which looks like sound coming out of that. So let's go ahead and we'll turn on our multimeter and you can see right now it's showing a value of 1 all the way over on the left hand side and this indicates essentially infinite resistance. So these two leads are not connected. If I touch them together it should beep and you should see that my resistance goes all the way down to close to 0. So for example let's just try this on the case. Touch it here and touch it there and you can see that I can get it to beep. Now you'll notice as I move it around it can, it's not consistent and this is be, just because the surface area for these leads is very small. If I'm just touching on say two points or something it's hard sometimes. So when you're testing continuity you want to make sure to move them around to make sure that you're actually getting a solid connection. Now if your multimeter does not have any sort of continuity tester what you can do instead is just put it on one of the resistance indicators. So for example, say two kilo ohms. Again, you can see I'm getting a value of one on the left hand side when they're not connected. If I touch them together, you can see it goes all the way down to say 0 0.000, maybe 0 0.001, indicating that there is no resistance and that the current can just flow between the two leads. So it's not quite as nice as having the beep for the continuity, but in a pinch, if your multimeter doesn't have that, you can just do it this way. So the first thing we need to figure out is which two leads are the ground. So we're just going to use our multimeter to try and figure this out. So let me start at the left hand side and we'll see if these pins are one and two. So if I stick in my two leads, okay, I don't get a beep. Uh, I get some sort of lower resistance, but not a beep. Now let's try the other end. Okay, so that definitely has zero resistance. So I'm going to guess that those are the common or ground lines. All right, so these are pins one and two. Now let's go ahead and we're going to measure the voltages. So what I'm going to do here is I'll turn my multimeter to... My voltages range from plus 5 volts to minus 5 volts and plus 12 volts to minus 12. So I'll put the multimeter on the 20 volt and this means it'll measure anything from 0 up to 20. And I want to make sure it's on DC and not AC and that's the solid line as opposed to the squiggle line. So if I put it on 20 and you don't want to put it on anything higher than that say 200 or 600 because otherwise the range is just so huge that you might not be able to measure the difference between say 5 and 12. So we'll leave it on 20. It says 0 
which is good. All right, I'm going to turn on the power supply, and nothing changes in terms of the power supply itself. There's no lights to indicate that it's on. So again, use caution. But now let's go ahead and we will see what kind of voltages we get. And let me tilt this up so you can see it a little bit better. All right, and one other thing to note is actually looking at the diagram, the numbers on the pins are actually looking at it as it's plugged in, for example, like this. And so don't be fooled by that. So the pins are actually upside down when you're actually plugging them in here. So again, this is pin number four, should be 12 volts. Pin three, five volts. Pin five, pin six is minus five, and pin five is minus 12. And you can see that there's actually some slop in these. So even though this one's supposed to be minus 12, it's actually a minus 11, uh, which isn't great. Now I pulled this out of a working Apple IIe, so I know it works, but that's a little, seems a little suspect. So if I was having any problems with that Apple IIe, I might actually suspect the power supply since these don't seem to be really spot on. All right, but in general, I'm getting the voltages that I expect, so I'm just gonna assume that this works. If I wasn't getting those voltages, say I was getting absolutely nothing, then I might check the wires to make sure there wasn't a loose wire. If I wasn't getting any voltage at all, then I might suspect that there was a problem on the AC side of the power supply. So something, say a capacitor that burned out, or the transformer went bad, or even the switch itself is bad. Uh, in that case, I wouldn't really want to mess around with the AC side just because it's harder to diagnose and harder to fix and also when you're trying to diagnose it, it's also more dangerous. So things you can do to repair a power supply, uh, if you notice capacitors that are burned out, you can definitely replace those. Uh, if there's loose wires, obviously you can replace those. If all else fails, and let me turn this off. Um, in my other video, I showed how you can completely replace the power supply. So, for example, Ultimate Micro, here is their universal power supply. And this is the board that replaces the board inside the power supply unit. And then this is the actual power supply itself. And this supplies the same plus or minus 5 volt, plus or minus 12 volt that the Apple II series uses. The nice thing about this is it'll fit pretty much any power supply unit that's in an Apple II and you just break off the board at the correct length. So I didn't really go too much in depth as far as the actual electronics. I would definitely recommend checking out some schematics online if you're really curious about how these things work. But I hope you learned a little bit about power supplies and I'll see you next time.